Welcome to Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC, a course to help you get started using the Telerik UI set of components and features in your own applications. My name is Alex Ziskind, and I've been training developers like you in modern web technologies for a few years now, and I'll be taking you on this journey today. In this course, we'll take the approach of putting you in the shoes of an engineer that's adding new features to an existing application for a client, RPS. You've previously already developed version one of the RPS Project Tracker, which is a web-based issue tracking application. And now your client wants you to add new features and update the application to version two. Throughout this course, we'll be incorporating features and components from the Telerik UI library into an existing ASP.NET MVC application. We'll be doing some exercises in this course, so make sure you download the code base to help you get started. We'll look at the before and after states of the application so you see the goal of what each exercise is trying to accomplish. We'll start out by adding basic Telerik UI components to the application, and you'll see how to harness the power of Telerik UI in a matter of minutes. This will show you how to install buttons, dropdowns, sliders, inputs, and more. Then we'll get into some more advanced components like the chart and the grid. Now, components don't live in isolation, and it's important to know how they interact with each other. So we'll see how to incorporate Telerik UI components to interact with existing functionality of the application and with each other. Finally, we'll see how to change the theme of all the components all at once. We'll also build our own theme, and we'll see some other styling options available with Telerik UI. By the end of this course, you'll know how to navigate the Telerik UI documentation site and how to incorporate the components you'll find there into your own applications. Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC is a library designed to offer a full breadth of UI components and UI-related features that gives developers everything they may need in a single toolkit. And while Telerik UI is known for their extensive set of UI components, Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC is more than just UI widgets. Along with the UI components, Telerik UI includes optional tools and features that help development. Features like an abstraction layer called Data Source, which offers a very powerful way to perform data operations that also integrate with advanced components like the grid. Validation is also built in for your forms, as well as globalization for simplifying the creation of multilingual apps. There are also other useful features like PDF and Excel export, drag and drop, and a templating engine that are all optional, but it's nice to know that they're there. Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC is designed to be modular. As we'll see in this course, you can use only the components that you need in order to keep your code base as light as possible. It also gives you options on how components are included in your application. In this course, we're going to include all the components, the server-side and the client-side components, by using a NuGet package. But you can also include the client-side libraries by using a Content Distribution Network, or CDN. Three other huge benefits to using Telerik UI is that it's backed by a team of developers with unlimited professional support, and there are frequent updates to the library and an extensive documentation set. In order for you to be successful with this course, let's take a look at some prerequisites next. This is a beginner level course for those that are getting introduced to the Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC library. However, it is aimed at those developers who already know ASP.NET MVC. Therefore, it's required that you already know ASP.NET MVC and JavaScript concepts before jumping into this course. Let's expand on that a little bit here. We're going to focus on Telerik UI in this course and the HTML helpers that come with the library. Our interaction with writing ASP.NET MVC specific code will be very limited. That's why it's assumed that you already know the Razor View Engine syntax and how to use Razor Views. It's also assumed that you know about ASP.NET MVC routing and controllers and actions. You should know how to use HTML helpers in your Razor views. We'll be using the ones that come with Telerik UI, which I'll sometimes also refer to as Kendo UI. And we'll also be using our own custom HTML helpers here as well. You don't need to write your own, but you'll be using the ones that I provide with the sample application. And also you need to know about bundling and minification that comes with ASP.NET MVC. We'll be using bundling and minification to reference our client-side Kendo UI libraries. Now, I did mention that JavaScript is a requirement. Because we're using server-side technologies here in this course, you're not strictly required to know JavaScript. We will be using some JavaScript to enhance the experience of using the Kendo UI library. However, it is already part of the starter application, and I'll explain any related code as we go. 
especially nowadays that is so prevalent in the enterprise and large applications in general. JavaScript is a highly recommended skill to learn, but we won't be covering it in this course. Finally, you don't need any prior Telerik UI experience or knowledge. We'll cover all that you need in this course. The same goes for Bootstrap. While we're using Bootstrap for initial styling and layout, it's not required knowledge for this course. As far as the tools we'll be using, all the demos are demonstrated using Visual Studio Community Edition in this course, which is a free tool available from Microsoft. Visual Studio Professional and Enterprise will work just as well. You may want to have Git set up and configured on your system as well, so you can clone the demos. However, the code is hosted on GitHub, which also allows you to download a zip archive of the demo applications, so having Git is not a strict requirement. We'll be looking at the sample applications a little bit later. Let's take a look at the resources you can use to go along with this course and during the course of your work with Telerik UI. Let's go over some resources that you should have handy while working on this course. There are some sample applications that you want to download. I'll come back to where to get them and how to run them in a little bit. For now, let's look at a few web pages that you should keep open. If you head over to Telerik.com, you can tap on the demos link here and then scroll down a little bit. In the middle, you'll see Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC. Now, sometimes these pages change around a little bit, so you can always get to it by going to All Products, UI for ASP.NET MVC, and then head over to Demos. This page will allow you to have access to the demos of all these widgets and components, as well as sample applications that were built by the company. If you take a look at the sample application, I'm gonna click on this one here, you can see examples of how these widgets are implemented, and this will give you a good sense of how they're organized. You can also click on this link that says, the source for this demo is available on GitHub. So if I click on that, you'll see a fairly recently updated sample application that you can download and run on your own, and you can look at the code. Very handy if you're just learning. Now let's go back a little bit here. This is an invaluable tool that you must have open, and we're gonna have this open while we're developing our application. Let's say you click on one of these widgets here. This will take you to an interface that shows off the components on the left side here in the menu. It even has information on whether the component is new or not. Let's say we selected grid and this has the basic usage for the grid. It has some examples, the features, the source code that you can use, even the server side code that works with the source code. So this is a really good tool for you to utilize while you're developing. The demo site for these widgets also has a lot more examples and more information than the documentation site for the widgets. Speaking of the documentation site, I'm going to have that open as well. So I'm going to open a new tab, then go to All Products, UI for ASP.NET MVC, and then I'll click on Docs and Support up here, scroll down a little bit, and click on Documentation. This will bring me to the site where I have access to UI for ASP.NET MVC. Here you'll be able to get to the API reference. You'll be able to see the getting started guide and the widget documentation, which we'll be using extensively throughout this course. Another interesting section for you to look at once you're done with this course is the tutorial section. There are a couple of different tutorials you can go through here that have the source code and they give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a sample application, similar to the one we'll be doing here. Now, besides the UI for ASP.NET MVC documentation, we're also going to be using the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation. Sometimes you'll see me opening up that documentation for Kendo UI for jQuery, and this is because some of the same resources are used for Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC as Kendo UI for jQuery. The reason for this is that Telerik UI for ASP.NET MVC provides server-side wrappers for the Kendo UI for jQuery components, among other server-side capabilities. Don't let this confuse you too much. You really don't have to deal with jQuery besides including it in your layout views. You might need to refer to the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation once in a while for topics such as web font icons and custom client-side JavaScript bundles. Don't worry, I'll go through this with you when the time comes. This is the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation site, and there are a few things here that are important that are not available on the UI for ASP.NET MVC documentation site. So you can have this one open as well. All right, let's take a look at the demo application in the next lesson.
Before we start coding, we need to see what we're coding. Let's take a quick trip of the project tracker. Here's the dashboard page of the project tracker where we can see active issues and some brief statistics about the total issues in the system. Here at the top, we can filter by a time period, whether it's the last three months, six months, or one year. At the bottom, you have a chart here that displays the open items versus closed items. We're gonna be implementing all of this in this course. We can also filter by user and all the filters interact with each other and are taken into account to display the active issues and the chart. Now, on the backlog page, we have a grid view of all the issues that's pageable and we can filter by either my items or open items or closed items. Here we can add new items if we need to. And there's our new item. I can go into the details for each of the items and edit the details. Everything is saved on the fly and I can have an item type, which I'll state as a bug. Status will be open. The estimate is a rough estimate of the time that it's gonna to take to complete the bug. And I can give this a priority. I can also pick an assignee for this particular bug. And I have a tabbed interface at the top, which we're also gonna implement, that allows me to add tasks, complete the tasks, or change the task names, or delete the tasks. And I also have a comments section called Chit Chat. Here I can just add comments to other people's items or to my own item. And that's a quick tour of the application that we're gonna be working with.